In this video, we're going to be going over the basic uses of Nmap, which is a network discovery tool, which allows you to discover hosts and services on a computer network. Nmap is already installed in Kali, so we can go ahead and start Kali. So we need to make sure that the domain controller and the PFSense virtual machines are all running. We are also going to have a Windows 10 client open. This gives us some sort of real world environment. So if we head over to the Kali machine and we just use the credentials that we first entered. So before we do anything, we do want to see what our IP is. So we can simply do this by doing IP config. And that is the IP that we're getting. So what we can do is we can simply run nmap 192.168.2.0 slash 24. So hopefully we should be able to see the Windows 10 client along with the domain controller. This does take a little while though, so we'll come back after it's finished. So now that's done, let's have a look at the results. So we have one, two, three, four IPs. And we already know that our IP is 106. So that's this one down here. And we have a 105 and a 102 and a dot one. So by the looks of things, because this hasn't given us a lot of information so far, we can assume that this is our domain controller as there is a lot of ports open and a lot of services running. From the information given, we can also assume that this is our Windows machine. We can, however, change this command to give us more information. So if we give it the A argument, or capital A argument, and then run the command again, it will give us more information. So now that's done, let's see what Nmap has given us. And as we can already see, that there's a lot more information. So as we look at what some of the services and ports that are open, we can immediately see that this the 445 is Windows Server 2012. So our assumptions were right. Now, if we scroll down, it will give us more information to what is running. So Microsoft Windows 2012. So again, indicates uh, that it is the Windows Server. So if we scroll down, there's a lot of lots of information regarding the server 2012. It will give us what the domain name is, what the forest is called, and even what the computer name is. So as we scroll down a little bit more and look at the 105 address, there isn't a, much information and it's quite conflicted to figure out what it is. But here we can see that the service info and the operating system is Windows. Apart from that, there isn't much more information so from that, let's try a few more arguments. We can go ahead and try a TCP connect scan. And this type of scan connects to the target port with a full three-way handshake. So what the scanner will do is it will send a SYN packet to the client. The client will then send a SYN and ACK packet back to the scanner. And then the scanner will then send a ACK packet back. If the port is closed, the scanner will send a SYN packet to the client and the client will reply with an RST packet back. So let's try that now. So if we just press up, we can go back to our first command. So we can use the ST argument with a capital T. And actually let's go ahead and do this on the domain controller. So we're going to use the 102 address. So we can get rid of the net mask at the end and just run that. And that will run it just on that IP. So from this, it hasn't really given us much more than what we already knew. So let's go up and compare them. This is saying that there is 19 ports out of the 1000 that Nmap uses. So if we just go up here and it has exactly the same number of ports open.
So let's try another method. We can use the TCP SYN scan. And what this does is a bit like the scan we used before. However, it is called a half open scan. And that's because it doesn't complete the full three way handshake. This basically just sends a SYN packet to the client and then the client will respond to the scanner. So it will be a SYN packet to the client. The client will respond with a SYN and, and ACK packet. And then the, the scanner won't send anything back to the client. And if the port is closed on the client, the scanner will send a SYN packet to the client and then the client will just respond with the RST packet. So what we can do is, is just go back up again and we can just change this to SS with the S, the second S being a capital S. So that's finished. We can see that again, there is still 19 ports open. So nothing's changed. So we can also do a TCP fin scan. So the fin scan is slightly different. If the port is open on the client side, the scanner will send a fin packet to the client and the client won't reply with anything. However, if it is closed, the scanner will send a fin packet to the client and then the client will reply with an RST packet. And we can easily do this by changing the last character to an F. And as expected, there is no ports open. So there is also a TCP Xmas tree scan and this uses a fin packet, a URG packet and a null packet. And if the port is open, it will have no response back. And again, we can just press up, change this last character to an X and run the command. And again, there is no ports open. There is also a TCP null scan. This essentially uses a TCP packet with no flag set. And we can demonstrate this by change the last character to capital N. No ports are open. A TCP act scan is very useful to use as it can map out a firewall rule set. It is also useful as it can determine if the firewall is a simple packet filter. We can do this by just changing the last character again to an A. So as the Windows domain controller has a firewall in place, it's shown that the, all of the ports that we've scanned are closed. The next scan is a TCP RPC scan. This is essentially for Unix systems to identify the remote procedure called ports and their associated programs. And we can do this by just changing the last character to an R. With Windows running multiple RPC services, we can see that some of the ports are open. The last scan we're going to be talking about is the UDP scan. This technique basically sends a UDP packet to the targeted port and the, the port will respond with a ICMP port unreachable message if the port is closed. We can do this by simply changing our last character to a U. So the UDP scan has finished and as we can see there's a lot more ports that are open. However, this took a very long time and it took roughly 25 minutes to complete so I wouldn't recommend running it. If you do have to use this option I would recommend combining it with a normal TCP SYN scan and you can combine the SU argument with a S capital S argument and this allows you to run both side by side so you can have both of the TCP and UDP packets scanned at the same time. In the Nmap documentation, there is loads of arguments that are well documented to what they do and how you can use them. However, the most common command used is the TAC A argument. Nmap is a very useful tool and we use it so we can establish what kind of connections or ports that are open and then we can go from there and use something like a Nessus to also identify what vulnerabilities are available. In the next video, Dale is going to be going over the advanced uses of Nmap and go into more detail about what Nmap can do and how we can use it.